I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. It is 559. Uh, if you would uh, join me as Mr. Kidd leads us, uh, leads us in the invocation and Mrs. Bush leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, if you so choose, please uh, join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Uh, dear Lord, we just ask that you be with those in our community that are uh, uh, suffering from this latest devastation of rains. Just be with those families and just put your arms around them, Lord. Uh, be with uh, those in our community that are also going through other crisis, Lord, and we just uh, pray for your comfort and for your understanding. Uh, Lord, and just wa watch over each and every one of them. Lord, as we close in on the end of the school year, just be with our students. Uh, just keep them safe. Help us uh, just finish strong, Lord, and be with the our teachers, our staff, our administrators, our, uh, just everyone involved, Lord, and we just thank you for those in this room and their hearts to serve your students and just be with us tonight. Help us have a, a productive meeting and just guide and direct our every steps. <clears throat> in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the Texas Pledge. Honor, Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Kidd and Mr. Bush. Thank you, each of you, for being here tonight. Item 2A, Special District Recognition. CISD and the Fine Arts Department NAM Foundation Best Communities for Music Excellence. Dr. Stocker. Okay, at this time I'll introduce Dr. Bob Horton, Coordinator of Fine Arts, to introduce the award. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I am excited to share with you that Conroe ISD has received a 2016 designation as a Best Community for Music Education. This is a nationwide program that is selected by the NAMM, National Association of Music Merchants Foundation. To earn this designation, we submitted an extensive survey with information about our school district, our community, and our instructional practices. Of the 14,000 potential applicants and over 2,000 school districts who applied, Conroe ISD was selected as one of the 476 in the entire nation to earn this designation. To quote the NAMM Foundation press release, the best communities for music education designation is awarded to districts that demonstrate outstanding achievement in efforts to provide music access and music education to all students. Districts that have been recognized by the NAM Foundation are often held up as models <coughs> for other educators looking to boost their own music education <coughs> programs. 2016 is the fifth consecutive year that CISD has been named a best community for music education. We have a few of our music educators with us tonight in, in, these, uh, in this meeting, so we'd like to thank them for attending. Would you and, please stand? Yes, please. <laughs> Wanted to thank each of you on the board for not only giving us the opportunity to have this recognition and. Uh, for the exemplary work by the music educators of CISD, but also for your support of music education in Conroe. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you. Just a couple of things. Uh, we just, as a, as a board and as a parent, we can't say enough how much we support and we love what you guys bring as fine arts music department. You guys just make our students that much more so well-rounded. Uh, case in point, my son's a phenomenal uh, aspiring football player. However, he's also a great tuba player. Uh, I'm sorry, trombone player. So, um, and for that, I, I say thank you, guys. It make us, makes us all much, much more so well-rounded students. And, uh, and for all interest, you know, just in the best interest for all parties, I kept him out of a uh, choir. So um, I just want you guys to know that, uh, 
as a board and uh, as Dr. Stockton, as a board, we just really much, so very much so support everything that you guys do. Really can't say how valuable the fine arts department is, and we just want you guys to continue all the great works and everything that you do. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item 2B, Special District, District Recognition, Division 1 Boys, 148-pound weight class powerlifting state <clears throat> champion, Dr. Stockton. Okay, this time I'll introduce uh, Mr. Colshan, principal of the Woodlands High School, um, to introduce our recipient. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight uh, to recognize a very special young man. Um, you allow us the opportunity to have a lot of extracurricular activities on our campus, and powerlifting is probably one that you haven't heard a lot about. Um, but it is a, a, a vibrant activity on our campus. We've got a lot of young men involved, uh, and we've had a lot of success. And uh, to introduce our state champion, I'd like to call on our coach, Craig Smith. Uh, Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, and the rest of the school board, uh, thank you very much uh, for giving us this opportunity to recognize one of our uh, great athletes. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Gavin Webster. <laughs> Gavin, Gavin is a tremendous uh, representative of CISD. He's a, tr he's a great student and a tremendous athlete. Uh, he is our fifth state champion at the Woodlands uh, in powerlifting. Uh, he entered the state meet this year. It's his second state, uh, straight year to uh, qualify for the state championships. Uh, he entered ranked sixth, so winning first wasn't necessarily, you know, what we were expecting when we went in there. But he set a personal best by 30 pounds with a 510-pound squat uh, to put him right there in contention How much to does he weigh? really gain a lot of people. He followed that up with a school record 330-pound bench press and then finished it off with a school record 540 pound deadlift uh, to put his score total out of reach. Uh, his state winning total of 1,380 pounds was also a school record. Um, probably one of the most impressive things though I can say what he did this year is you know you get three squats, three deadlifts, and three bench at each meet. He competed in five meets this year, three regular season, the regional meet, and the state meet. And for his, for his season, he was a perfect 45 for 45 on all of his lifts this year. Wow. And I can't say I've ever had a lifter do that with 100% uh, completion on all his lifts. So uh, thank you for helping me recognize your 148-pound state champion, Gavin Webster. Coach, get in there, guys. There we go. <laughs> Good job, man. And how does that nice squash you? <laughs> on behalf of the board, I'd like to say just a few things to, uh, to Gavin. Congratulations. You know, there's a lot of uh, great things coming out of uh, Woodlands High Schools, and, and this is just another mark of another great uh, success story that we that we get to, to honor and celebrate today. I'd, I'd love to have your parents stand up, stand up as well to congratulate you guys on a great great job for your young man. Congratulations! And, just, uh, and on behalf of the board and uh, Dr. Stockton, we once again say congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much for representing us and your community so well uh, at these competitions. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. yeah, Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Rochelle Fines, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, Nurse Travis Intermediate, Dr. Stock. 
This time I'll introduce Dr. Debbie Phillips, who's our Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, to, uh, to make this very special introduction. Thank you, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you Rochelle Tennis, the re recent recipient of the Heart Saver Hero Award. Um, this award is given by the American Heart Association in recognition of heroes who jump in to save a life. On February 24th, Paul Morehouse, a, a contractor working at Travis, Travis Intermediate School, went into cardiac arrest. Mrs. Tennis, the school nurse at Travis, jumped into action and helped to save his life by administering CPR and also using the um, AED. Mrs. Tennis has been the school nurse at Travis for the last two years. She has uh, six years experience as a school nurse and also more than six years as a pediatric nurse. Um, she's been instrumental in training the safety team at Travis Intermediate and it was this team that pulled together in a time of need and saved this man's life. We are all so grateful that Mr. Morehouse has made a, a complete recovery. He's back home with his family and he's here with us tonight. Awesome. Um, thanks to Mrs. Tennis's uh, quick action. So please join me in thanking our very own heart saver hero, Rochelle Tennis. And she, she's also here with her family, which we'll introduce in just a minute as well. Super. Rochelle, I just want to say a few words on behalf of the board. Abraham Lincoln was once quoted as saying, uh, next to creating a life, the finest thing man can do is save one. That's what you did, and we appreciate that. There's also another thing I found. It says, you don't build a house without a foundation, and you don't build a hospital without a nurse. We're glad you didn't go to the hospital. We're glad that you came to Travis Intermediate. And uh, we are so thankful for all that you have done. And we just want to say uh, you're receiving the Special District Recognition Award on behalf of uh, the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees in appreciation for your life-saving actions and your commitment and dedication to the students and the community of Conroe ISD. We thank you for all you do. Yeah, we also have her principal, Tamika Taylor, and also Barbara Robertson here. I don't know if y'all want them awesome. in the picture Absolutely. as well. And her family's here. Yeah. Want to introduce your family? Um, this is my dad, Gene Barnett, my daughter, Gracie Tennis, and my husband, Terry Tennis. Also, Mr. Moorhead is here. Mr. Moorhead? There he is. Oh, Moorhouse. Morehouse, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Stockton, not to take away from Ms. Tennis' uh, uh, performance and, and uh, what a special relationship between, I can't imagine a relationship between somebody that saved your life and, uh, and, and, and the life saver, uh, but uh, this is the third time mm -hmm. that, that this AED in our campuses have saved a life. Is yes. that correct? Yes, third time that we're aware of, yes. Uh, I, just, I just think back to, you know, how many years did we not have them at campuses and how fortunate we are to be able to afford them, to have them, and uh, for people that are knowledgeable to know how to use them and for people to be saved with them. So Absolutely. thank you again, Dennis, for your awesome performance. And thank you, the, thank you, Dr. Stockton, for having them at each campus and at each athletic event. Okay, item D, citizen participation. The next 30 minutes has been designated for 
public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with bo board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Mrs. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. We call Melissa Insminger. We're glad you're here. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Melissa Insminger, as she stated. I have two children in CIC special education system. I am here tonight to express my extreme concern and disappointment in CISD. I have lost complete trust in CISD due to mishandling of testing and ARD process, some of which are outside my child's legal rights. As a parent, you want to trust that the school is telling you is true. However, due to events that have happened in this district, I have lost that trust. How would you like to be told as a parent that the person conducting your child's testing did not have time to do observations in the class that she struggles in? He did not have time. That to me tells me the district does not have time to mess with my child's needs. Some of the services that she needs are drawn by this evaluation. And now she will not get these services she needs because he had no time. This, uh, this only one of the many things that have taken place in this district. I have had people not follow my child's IEP all year, then state on recording in an ARD that she was unaware of his accommodations, so she did not follow them. I have had a head district employee from special education refuse to put things that should legally be there in an ARD document, even with an advocate reading the statute to her from the TEA and showing a copy. She still refused to put in the document. Every diagnostician I have dealt with in this district only wants to argue and bully parents in an effort to get their way. This is the first district I have had to pay an advocate to help me in the ARD process. Parents should not have to face these struggles from the school who should be helping them. Having a child with special needs, and in my case, too, is hard enough without the constant pushback, inaccurate testing, and illegal actions of CISD. I contacted TEA Region 6 and made a complaint, but the head of special education obviously did not have the time to contact me about my complaints as TEA process states they will. I will continue moving forward from the TEA to the federal level until I'm satisfied with the changes within CISD. The district does not follow the law and, refuses to, and I refuse to sit idly by and watch my child and others be failed by CISD. And when parents disagree with the school, the district sends their very aggressive special education attorney. Uh, there are countless parents that feel just the same as I do per the special education Facebook page. Conroe has a terrible reputation um, amongst the community as far as the special education realm. I uh, would appreciate any help in this matter that I can get. Thank you for being here tonight. I would encourage you to, to visit with Ms. Gladys when you have the chance, Legal Department of CISD, okay? Okay. And uh, that, that would be the appropriate response. Thank okay? you. Thank you. Ms. Godfrey, do you have another? Um, Amy Cotton. Hi, good evening. Good evening. I'm also here to um, address special, educa special education needs. Um, my name is Amy Cotton. I'm the mother of four children, and two of my children have special needs. I'm here to express my extreme concern, disappointment, and lack of trust that has developed in the district special education system. Let me first start by saying that I do know that special education services can work. My oldest son, Joshua, went from failing fourth grade to being an honor roll student in fifth grade. The biggest accomplishments for him, though, are not the grades, but his dramatic increase in confidence and growing independence. 
The, this only came after many hours of fighting for services for a child with ADHD, anxiety that presented with vomiting and high blood pressure during school days, and dyslexia that was diagnosed after outside testing. When his star scores came back less than 24 hours before the ARD, they called and informed us they were removing the reading and writing portions from the ARD document. This was absolutely unacceptable. I refused to leave the ARD meeting until everything was returned the way it was written in the original document that we were very happy with. The ARD meeting went on for several hours before it was returned to the original format. We are currently satisfied with his IEP. However, my youngest son, Samuel, started kindergarten this year with a known diagnosis of autism. He started therapies at two months old and at three and a half got an official diagnosis from the head of the Autism Clinic at Texas Children's. This year, he received the additional diagnosis of ADHD. I spoke with a teacher and principal before school started and even had a conference to help the teacher better understand him and what his triggers and sensory overloads might be. He had extensive therapies, ECI, ABA school, and reintegrated into private preschool being taught by a teacher certified in special education and PPCD. He entered kindergarten already knowing how to read and write his first and last name. After he was tested by CISD with documentation from many sources, the LSSP spent 44 minutes with him individually and told us he did not meet criteria for autism and he just seemed distracted. Academically, he was not struggling, but socially, emotionally, and behavioral, he is. And we consider, when you consider a child for special education services, there's three factors, academics, functional, and behavioral. The school requested he receive social skills training, but it's only when the counselor has time. They also suggested a 504, but the R document doesn't recognize any disabilities. The FIE is a complete um, contradictory. The diagnostician told me that there are many children in this district with dual diagnosis of autism and ADHD that do not receive special education services. When I voiced that I was feeling this was more of a fight than them trying to work together, she told me I was just not listening. As you can likely imagine, this was not well received. When we requested a meeting with the head of special education after the FIE review, we were told she could not meet with us, but she would come to the ARD meeting. That didn't happen. We were told that we misunderstood and the district representative was provided. I can promise you that I did not misunderstand somebody telling me that the head of special education was going to be at our ARD meeting. We were also told there was no rubric to determine if a child meets the autism criteria, that it's a committee decision. We unfortunately were forced to sign a disagreement at the ARD and then request an IEE. The IEE took him out of school for four days. They evaluated him for 12 plus hours, um, a drastic difference from the very limited evaluation time he received from Conroe ISD. We're currently waiting for the IEE results, but have been told that we can only have a copy if the school district approves it. I'm not the first parent to have had these and similar difficulties. There is a Facebook page, as Melissa said, um, dedicated to special education parents and caregivers. And I know that it can be viewed at times as just being easy to buy into people's negativity. But when the same concerns are voiced over and over, then I think there is a real problem in the district. I'm hopeful that I will be one of the last parents that have to face the extreme difficulty of getting my child the help he needs. This district has a huge problem in the special education department. It should not be this difficult to get help for a child. Many parents give up, and it's also understood that if parents disagree, then the aggressive special education attorney shows up. But while waiting through this extensive process, my son is suffering and now being, beginning to fall behind when he was well ahead at the beginning of the year. He shouldn't be held back to baseline when he already started well above it. And there's no reason you can't have a child with high functioning autism in special education. A high academic level does not rule a child out for services. He currently has a 504 plan, but it's proving to not be adequate as we had already suspected. I'm not one to sit back and watch my child suffer consequences for a problem or disability that they are eligible for help with but are being denied. And I refuse to stand by and watch it happen. And I will file with TEA and any other agencies I need to until I'm satisfied with the changes to the district and special education program as a whole. I am sure you're all aware that there is a child fine code. Myself and many other parents feel that this district is failing in many cases and flat out refusing to allow the code in the Texas law. I know several parents that do record their meetings and have these statements on recording, as does the school because they record as well. I'm open to any suggestions and help that are offered, and I will be following up and following through with this process. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> All right, we're going to move items uh, 9A and B up in the order tonight uh, for the benefit of some young families. And uh, so 9A, uh, naming of the principal for Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. Dr. Stockton. You know, um, 
before I make this recommendation, that uh, beautiful little noise in the in the in the hallways. Welcome to come back in because I think absolutely he just got excited about the moment. I think. Um, and there, okay, very good. All right, um, I am very excited tonight to uh, recommend the principal of Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. Uh, A.J. Lavecki is <coughs> currently an assistant principal at, at the Woodlands College Park High School. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I am, as I've told you before, it's, it's one of my biggest responsibilities to recommend campus leaders to you, and I'm proud to um, recommend A.J. to you. I have a motion. I move we approve uh, A.J. Lavecki as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And congratulations. Thank you. I can see you walking the halls with him now. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm the only uh, Lebecki with something to say tonight, apparently. Um, Mr. Husbands, Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton, thank you for this opportunity to serve the students and staff at Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. I look forward to working closely with all Oak Ridge High School administration and staff to continue to enhance. <laughs> Been there. To, to continue to enhance and create an exceptional school program for all of our students. As some of you know, I'm currently working on my doctor in education. My cohort is made up of administration from several districts in the surrounding area. In my conversations with them, it's clear that Connor ISD is the premier district in the area and the state. And I know that I'm fortunate <laughs> to be surrounded by excellent teachers, excellent administrators, excellent mentors, and most of all, an excellent student, students and families. I want to introduce my family who's here tonight. <laughs> my wife, Allison. My Stand daughter up. Elena. Stand up. 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 Stand
Congratulations. We certainly welcome you to stay, but again, let me repeat, the young families deserve to be home at this time of night, so you're <laughs> welcome to leave as well at this point, so you, it's your choice. <clears throat> Item three, consent agenda. I've had no request to remove any items. Does anybody have uh, any, any desire to discuss anything? Very good. Then I would entertain a, a motion and a second. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. A motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed like sign. Thank you very much. Item 4A, uh, sorry, that item has been sorry. Pulled, sorry. pulled. Item 4B, consider uh, approval of guaranteed maximum price amendment for Grangerland Intermediate. Dr. Stock. Yeah, and just, just for clarification, I'm going to pull the item 4A and uh, we'll move to 4B. Consider approval of guaranteed maximum price amendment. Easy Foster, um, will you present that item, please? President, husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval a guaranteed maximum price amendment for a Grangerland Intermediate Additions Project, and then authorize Dr. Stockton to execute the contract documents. On February 16th of this year, our Board of Trustees selected Balfour Beatty Construction to be the district's construction manager at risk for the Grangerland Intermediate Additions Project. Since then, we've advertised and selected, uh, received bids, and based on Balfour Beatty's construction proposal for this work, the district has negotiated a guaranteed maximum price of $4,848,495 for this work. This work includes a uh, classroom addition at Grangerland Intermediate, as well as a driveway expansion for Cox Intermediate. This time, we're asking for your approval. I have a motion. A motion to approve. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? My only question was about how many additional classrooms for Granger Land. I wasn't quite clear when I read through the documents. <coughs> There's eight additional classrooms at Granger Land. It, eight? It very closely matches the addition we did at Vogel that opened okay. a year ago. All right. Then I understand. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed like sign. Thank you very much. Item uh, 4C, Dr. Stockton, capital improvements. Okay, Mr. Foster. This time I'd like to update you on the capital improvements that we have in progress throughout the district. Starting at the Woodlands High School, this is our girls' locker room edition. Uh, the project is moving, all, moving along well. It is on schedule. As you can see uh, from the photos, the, the finishes and fixtures are starting to be installed in this building. Uh, it is moving. Uh, the girls should be moving into the new portion in the first part of May, uh, at which time when they occupy the new portion, we'll enter the existing girls' facilities and, and renovate those facilities to complete this project. As I said before, it is on schedule and come together well. At the new high school, uh, as you can see from these photos, the uh, site work is continuing on. The building footprint is what is, is evident at this point. So you can see the shape of our new facility as it's, as it's coming out of the ground now. Uh, weather permitting, as weather's been a bit of a challenge over the last couple of days, but the, uh, the foundation work, so the drill piers, things of that nature, started on Friday. Have you been out there in the last couple of days just to see, give us a look, kind of a lay of the land on the flooding that's going on? I have not been out there personally, okay. but our staff has been out. The site itself has, has been dry, Okay. Uh, but we haven't seen any backup water out of the San Jacinto River coming right. back to us that's yet. What so that's about. what we're watching over the next, next few days. Okay, thank you. Moving on to our 2016 campus life cycle project, uh, a major portion of this work is at Runyon Elementary. Uh, this is the uh, obligatory picture of the front door of the school. <laughs> um, inside the school, we're adding uh, mechanical room spaces. So what you're looking here, the work, the work we did over spring break was to get the foundations and whatnot for these for, to, to hold the new equipment. Uh, the work you're seeing now is the progress of the structure to fill in the roof area over those, those pieces. A little bit of a, an idea of the complexity involved to get those pieces done. There's three spaces that you'll see, like the one that's outlined in red. The red is the iron going in to build a new roof structure. 
there's three of those spaces done and at this point all three of them are dry so you can see now they're they're putting the roof over those over those sections now so that job is progressing well it is doing it is coming along just as planned so that we'll be ready for the for the the big heavy lifting to be done as soon as school's out for the summer over at Caney Creek High School, which there's another major portion of this work, uh, Caney Creek is getting a building envelope uh, upgrade. So we're replacing the roof structure, uh, and what you're going to start seeing now is the transformation of the the, uh, the appearance of that building. So the uh, the original green roof is is going away, and the uh, the roof that more closely matches with uh, Moorhead Junior High across the street and comes into closer alignment with the school colors is going on as we speak. So we're doing a two-colored uh, roof option, some beige roof and some, some uh, it's, it's a uh, kind of a red brick color roof to go over top of that. That, that project is on schedule and progressing, progressing well. Moving on, we're, we're almost done with pictures. Uh, this is an update for the CT and robotics project, which happens inside Caney Creek in Oak Ridge ninth grade. It's one that's recently been authorized, the contracts are in place, and the, the subcontracts are going on, the materials are being ordered. Uh, Caney Creek High School is going to start in the unoccupied areas before school gets out, but the, uh, the work at Oak Ridge ninth grade will, will start in earnest once the school is out for summer. Moving over to the new elementary, Flex School number 17, again, we don't have any pictures to report, but the contracts are in place, the contractor is mobilized on the site. Uh, so that side work is, is starting again weather's been the challenge over the last several days uh, but we got the, all the contractual uh, items checked off at the end of last week and the, the equipment and stuff mobilized on Friday just before the rain started and then that is our update very good thank, thank you, you Mr. Foster any questions or discussions Mr. Foster very good we're going to item 5a consider approval of 2016-17 employee group health program dr stock okay this time i'll ask mr rice our cfo to come make that presentation good evening president husbands members of the board and dr stockton tonight it is my pleasure to recommend that the board of trustees approve the employee medical coverage rates and plan design for the self-funded health insurance program the district self-funded group health insurance program was restructured for the 2014-2015 year to provide a quality health plan at a reasonable cost to the district's employees. However, due to the continued rise of medical and prescription drug costs and because the district's below market premiums, the plan must again be modified to remain sound. Medi medical and prescription, prescription plan designs are recommended for change along with premium increases for the 2016-2017 plan year. The proposed plan design changes employee premium increases are shown on the attached exhibit and then also on your screens. <clears throat> CISD believes all of its plans will continue to be offered at competitive rates, particularly the Aetna Whole Health Plan, which utilizes the Memorial Hermann ACO and the Aetna Select Networks. If the plan changes are approved, the total projected health plan cost will be $44.9 million, with the district funding 59% of the health plan costs and employee premiums funding the remaining 41%. The Employee Benefits Committee is also recommending this plan, and if there are any committee members here, I'd like to recognize them and stand, please. Thank you very much for your effort. And uh, Terry Brown, the district's insurance consultant, is also here to answer any questions that we might have. And at this time, I recommend your approval of the 2016-2017 Employee Group Health Program. May I have a motion, please? I move. Thank you. Second. 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 I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion or questions? If you're hearing none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, committee, again for. Thank for, you, board. I know it's a it's a thankless task, but uh, we do appreciate. It. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. And item five B financial reports. Dr. Stockton. Rice. Yes, President, husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here tonight to present the financial statements for the month of March. These statements will include our general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet, 
The balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. Each month we always like to look at our cash and investments. So we'll take a look here and if we concentrate on the general fund, we see we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of $3.5 million. We have investments in the pools of $194.7 million. We have investments that are less than a year, $64.4 million. And investments with TCG uh, Investment Advisors of $50,590,000, giving us total cash and investments of $313.3 .3 million in the general fund. We also like to always, uh, about this time of year, start tracking our tax collection progress. As you can see, we, we compare favorably to where we were last year, so we feel very comfortable with our tax collections. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues, expenditures, and fund balances. In the revenue section, it's broken down into three categories. That's local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, we can see in the general fund and debt service that property taxes is the largest generator of revenues in those funds. And food service, that comes from food sales. And in self-funded insurance, it comes from premium contributions. Now looking at our projected unassigned fund balance for the general fund, uh, we're looking at a projected increase this year of $675,000 uh, to $115,792,000. Debt service, we're looking at a projected increase of $5.3 million to $39.3 million. And an increase of $576,000 in our child nutrition fund balance to $3.2 million. Now, uh, this is our 2015 bond referendum status update. Uh, this report also includes the projects that is being transferred in from the general fund, approximately $33 million. So this will just kind of give us a, a financial update on those prog programs. If you look in the funds expended and encumbered, we've currently, uh, we currently have $25.8 million uh, encumbered and expended. We have an estimate to complete of $467 million, giving us a projected forecast of $492.9 million. That leaves us uh, currently with $27.3 million worth of contingency and uh, a total a program of $520,245,000. If you look at the bottom left, you'll see the school bonds that were authorized in the 2015 <coughs> bond referendum of $487 million. This past January, we sold $135 million, and that leaves us with $352 million to sell. Self-funded insurance. For the month of March, we had total revenues of $3,354,000. We had total expenses of $3,563,000. That is revenues under expenses of $208,806. A first month uh, with a sizable decline. Uh, however, for the year, we've had total revenues of $23.5 million, expenses of $23.2 million. So we still have revenues over expenses of a little over $300,000. So still cautiously optimistic. However, we do have the summer months coming up, and, and so we'll see how we progress there. Uh, participation at our wellness centers. Uh, Oak Ridge has had 3,616 uh, visits. The Conroe Center, 997 for a total of 4,613. So still good participation yeah, there. Right. <clears throat> Our investments for the month, par value at the end of the March was $495.8 million. The wham of our pools is one day and it's yielding right about 50 basis points. I don't know if y'all remember just a few years ago we were about four basis points in the pool, so you've seen that change. The wham of the safekeeping at U.S. Bank, that is the district's holdings that are less than a year, is 152 days and they're yielding a little over 66 basis points. Uh, our investments with TCG Investment Advisors is 599 days, and that's yielding 91 basis points. And so the wham of our combined portfolio is 80 days, and we're yielding 57 basis points. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is yielding 20 basis points. So we compare favorably there. And that's all. Thank you. Any questions? No, but Mr. Rice, I have a comment. I think yes, you and your team are doing an excellent job. Thank you, sir. That was a great report. Thank you, sir. Very detailed. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 8A to the recommendation of superintendent proposed non-renewal of term contract. That's fine. I will turn that over to uh, the board. 
I move the board approve the superintendent's recommendation and propose a non-renewal of Mr. Kirk Smith for reasons as stated in board policy DFBB local that the hearing, if any, be conducted by the Board of Trustees and that the board authorize the superintendent to provide notice of these actions to Mr. Smith. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? A second. I have a motion. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like so. Motion passes. Uh, item 8B, except for review of TASD local policy update 104. Dr. Mrs. Gladys, please. Thank you, Dr. Stocks and Mr. Husbands. You all have had the yellow vantage points. This is the second legislative, post legislative update from TASB. It primarily consists of changes to legal policies, um, but there are a few local policies which are detailed in your agenda item that we'll be bringing back in May. Many of them are not substantive at all. You know, primarily throughout the policy manual, they remove the names of staff members holding the position of Title IX and 504 to avoid having to modify policy in the future. There is one um, change I want to point out that's in the um, local policies and FDDA uh, ad admissions policy. We are the recommendation from TASB is to um, review our annually residency proof of residency for mm -hmm. students. We are we made a decision previously to this update to not do that. It's not a, a good use of staff time. P parents have to sign off on a, a notarized oath that they do reside in the district after they've prov provided the initial proof of residency verification. So you theoretically could be prosecuted for falsifying a government document if you say you live in the district when you don't. And we're not <clears> going to um, annually require people to provide a utility bill. Uh, to show that they live in the district once they provided that upon enrollment. Um, are there any questions about any of the particular legal or local policies? Or questions? We'll be back in May to ask for your adoption of the, the local ones in the 104. Thank you, Ms. Gladys. Uh, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, one, one more question. And this is just kind of a point of clarification mm -hmm. on the citizenship participation. It, it's my understanding it's inappropriate for us as a board to comment on any citizens participation however you know i think it if you're attending a board meeting for the first time it's it's important to note that all of the board i think i speak on behalf of all the board that we greatly respect and admire parents who step forward and and uh, are advocating for the best for their children and uh, i know we we hear that from time to time like this evening and and, and as a board uh, I know that's my question to you. We can't we can't comment on that, uh, but they're they're aware of that. Is that correct? And, correct. Um, and for, for people that don't know, when you attend an ARD meeting or a 504 meeting, parents at the conclusion of every meeting are given copies of a document called a procedural safeguard or notice of procedural rights that explains um, the courses of action that parents can take if they disagree with how a meeting the outcome of the meeting. Um, and obviously there's our complaint policy that's all over our line in the student handbook and they can also call and, and talk to the legal department or the special ed department. But because you all can't comment, the reason for that is because the public has to have notice of what you're going to be considering tonight and not knowing what the substance of people's concerns or comments to the board, we can't put proper notice on the agenda and that is the reason why you all cannot comment or specifically yeah. address those. Well, thank you. I just wanted to get clarification. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to Mr. Kidd. Mr. Kidd. So, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Second, and we voted, and we're done. All right.